excited that you're joining us tonight for the academic showcase for the College of Health Sciences. We are very stoked to share all that is involved in the College of Health Sciences from our panelists today, as well as our, some, some of our students. And also with everybody that's joining us tonight, fun fact, we have over 20 states represented online right now. So again, we're really excited that you'll be joining us. So let's get right into it. All right, well, my name is Aliana. I'm one of our admissions counselor, and my job is to support you in every step of this process and help you learn more about Boise State University. So before we dive in, I wanted to provide an idea of what you're going to be expecting for this evening. So we're going to start with just a quick overview of major exploration, and then I'll be inviting our representatives from the College of Health Sciences to share more about their program. And then at the end, we'll have a Q&A equipped with all of our representatives and our students that are here today. So if you do have any questions, just be sure to pop them in the Q&A area, and we'll be sure to get to them at the end of this. All right, so at Boise State, we have seven different academic colleges that house all of our different academic programs. So for example, tonight with our College of Health Sciences, that includes programs such as social work, nursing, and radiology. So students can pursue majors, minors, certificates uh, between all of these different colleges. So at Boise State, we wanna support you in all of your interests. So students can, for example, double major, they can double minor, they can even combine three different areas of study to create your own major, which is our 3D program. So if you're still trying to decide what you wanna to study tonight, we have a great resource called Major Finder that you'll see here on my screen. So you can simply go to that link there and type in any career path, area of interest, and it will show you some options that relate to that. Um, and then if you're truly undecided, that's okay too. Those are normal feelings to have. General Undeclared is actually one of our more popular majors that first year students select when applying to Boise State. So with that, we are very excited to share all that involves the College of Health Sciences. So tonight I'm joined by Mary Crowell, who is our Director of Adv Advising for the College of Health sciences and candace johnson who is our senior business operations manager hi thanks so much aliana uh i want to welcome all of you to our college uh we have some really great programs and two awesome academic coordinators here tonight to talk to you more about them um next slide please Within our college, we have uh, four schools. Actually, we have the School of Allied Health Science Sciences, which houses the radiologic science program, respiratory care, and kinesiology. We also have the School of Nursing, the School of Social Work, as well as the Department of, uh, it's, um, let's see, they changed their name, um, Public and Population Sciences, which is now a school. So with that, I would like to hand it off to Olga Salinas, our preclinical academic advising coordinator to talk more about some of our programs. Next slide, please. I'd like to kick it off with talking about radiologic sciences because we have such exciting news happening there right now. The radiologic sciences department actually offers bachelor's degrees. Now there's community colleges out there that offer the associate degree programs for students, but for us here live on campus, it is a bachelor's program in radiologic sciences. We offer the three modalities to you now versus just the one. That's the big exciting news, right? So students can choose to go bachelor of science, radiologic sciences with diagnostic radiology, which is x-ray, and it is the largest employment modality across the nation, as well as being the largest radiology program that we have. Um, these are the what I call the scientific artists, right? They uh, the the program head actually at one meeting said she's got over 200 ways to position an arm just to get the exact precise picture that a physician or the radiolog radiologist is going to need to create to make a diagnosis and therefore start creating a treatment plan. So we've got the X-ray where that would be your primary licensure. We can move. Uh, you can also go Bachelor of Science Radiologic Sciences Sonography. 
and that would be the primary licensure, or you could go Bachelor of Science, Radiologic Sciences, MRI. And that is brand new for this coming year, so I'm really excited that students will have the opportunity to pick the area that they want, although we usually encourage students pick more than one because they are these are capped enrollment programs. So let's, next slide, please. We could actually go beyond that because I just started talking about it so much. I got so excited. We can go beyond that slide, please, and we'll talk about the next program. Respiratory care. Did you know that respiratory care therapists are actually next to nurses, the most bedside inpatient care? So I'd like you to think about when you're watching like Grey's Anatomy or in my era, it was ER or the good doctor and they show people like rushing in and they're trying to save someone and someone's bagging and someone's intubating and they're talking about blood gases and everything else. And that's actually a respiratory care therapist. You will find, can we go to the next slide, please? You will find respiratory care therapists anywhere from beginning of life through end of life. So NICU, PICU, ER, floor care, a respiratory care therapist is a cardiovascular renal specialist. This is their absolute expertise because bottom line, let's talk about it. If we can't get someone breathing either because they're breathing on their own or they're breathing through ventilation, artificial ventilation, there's not much we can do. They are extremely skilled, highly skilled. And our students who graduate from this program are all across the nation. They are at Cleveland Clinic. They are at Boston Mass. They are here in the local area. That They're at the University of Virginia. They're at Duke University. This is an exciting program that students should really consider. Next slide, please. Let's talk about the School of Social Work. There are over 700,000 social workers in the United States, and we really, truly need more. So um, again, this is another licensure program. All sorts of fields that students could go into with a Bachelor of Social Work. Could you, next slide, please. It is a bachelor's program here leading on to licensure. We accept 25 students per semester into this program. Uh, very much a hands-on. Think about careers, not just like in health and welfare or addiction studies or um, cr uh, criminal justice or juvenile crime prevention or reentry um, or think more, think along the lines of law, advocacy, um, child life specialists in acute care settings. All of these expanded roles for social workers, thinking beyond what the norm might be. This is an exciting program for us as well. And it's a, it's a degree and a career that is expected to grow much faster than average in the United States. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague. Next slide, please. Where we're going to talk about the School of Nursing. Candice. Thank you, Olga. Um, so we can... Go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, so the School of Nursing offers a Bachelor's of Science degree in nursing. This degree allows students to sit for the NCLEX exam. Once the student passes the NCLEX exam, they're licensed as a registered nurse and can work in hospitals, schools, and clinics, just to name a few. We are the largest pre-licensure program in the state of Idaho. We have a cohort style model which means you go through the program in sequence and graduate with the group of students you start with. This allows you to become really close with your cohort and um, really build a study group. Uh, we have an amazing simulation center. It, it is a no stakes learning opportunity with lifelike mannequins. Um, the practice labs give students the ability to practice skills and prepare for clinical experience. Many of our students, um, they talk about once they get into the hospital setting, their experience in our simulation center and our labs help prepare them to go into the hospital and feel more confident when they're going in there for the first time. Um, there are clinical experiences within the program that are diverse to give students the best experience to prepare for their nursing careers. And with that said, I'm going to pass off to my, oh, next slide, please. And I'm gonna pass it off to my colleague, Shannon. Uh, I think Olga was gonna talk about this one. Oh, oh yes, it's Olga. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Shannon can talk about it as well. This no, is no, you go for it, you're good. <laughs> This is where I just wanted to kind of just circle back and say that really that all of our clinical programs, whether it's respiratory care, radiologic sciences, nursing, um, their social work, 
These are all intertwined professional programs. So a student, you might be coming in with one vision of thinking what you might want to go into. And we just like to encourage you to just expand that view of all the places that you could possibly be. And think about also the, the benefit here as well is that so many of the prereqs for one program are actually going to roll right into the prereqs for the other. So don't stress those kinds of things. That's where we're here to assist you through that. But we want to definitely help you explore the many possibilities that you actually have here at Boise State. And with that, we'll turn it over to my colleague, Shannon. Next slide, please. Awesome. Thank you, Olga. All right. So one of the, um, I think it's the, one of the coolest departments at Boise State and one of the coolest majors, and this is, I always say it's where all the cool kids hang out, um, is the Department of Kinesiology. And so kinesiology is all about the study of movement. Um, and there are so many different things that you can do with this degree. Next slide, please. Okay. So you did a Bachelor of Science in Kinesiology. There are four different emphasis that you could do. Um, neuromechanics, bio or no I'm sorry I can't read neuromechanics human performance and exercise um pre-allied health or rehabilitation sciences and so with these different and then there's a k-12 physical education so k-12 is if you want to be a PE teacher or a coach something like that at the ju or elementary junior high I can't talk high school levels um if you're interested in biomechanics you're going to be looking at um sorry I had to write some notes. Um, mechanical principles of human movement. Um, if you're going to go pre-allied health, this is more for students that are interested in graduate programs afterwards, pre-med, pre-dent. Um, I've even got some pre-veterinarians doing kinesiology, um, pre-chiropractic. These are all huge, and they all require things like organic chemistry. And so if this is somewhere where you want to go, definitely OCHEM is going to happen to you. Um, and the last one, the human performance, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> the exercise, human performance and exercise science. Um, this is for um, students who are interested in going towards like something with strength and conditioning, people that want to be um, not necessarily, oh, I actually missed my time, um, not like coaches, stuff like that, um, sports, sports psychologists, those kind of things. I did miss one, which is the allied health. Just don't see it on this slide. Um, so not pre health, but rehab um, sciences is one of our emphasis. And this is for students that are interested in physical therapy, occupational therapy, or athletic training. Next slide. Okay, the Department of Public Health and Population Sciences. Next slide. Okay, so in within our department, um, we have a couple different degrees that are um, offered. And so we have a health studies degree with a science emphasis. This is where students who, again, more are interested in pre-med, pre-dental, pre-veterinarian, all of those things, they generally gravitate towards a science emphasis, again, because of the amount of chemistry, physics, and biology they have to take. There's room within this degree for that. Um, our general emphasis is more for our students who are interested in health careers, but not necessarily things that are as science-based. And so our students who are diet want to be dietitians, our students who want to be nurses, um, our students who want to be occupational therapists, um, any of those, this is not, it's a little bit more broad. It doesn't have as many of the science classes that the science emphasis does. Um, and it's not quite as Backbreaking, I guess that's what I want to say. Um, and then we have our health informatics. And so this is a different emphasis. And so this is for students who want to be in healthcare and they want to help people, but they don't necessarily want to work with directly with people. So these are the people that write the reports, run the reports. They're the people that um, do the, um, like when we had things like the COVID outbreak. These were the ones pulling the reports saying which areas are being hit hardest, what areas are going to need um, more social distancing, what is going to happen in this, this stuff. And so those are the people that are looking at that. The last one is public health. And so with a public health degree, there's a couple different emphasis here. There's the general, there's the, um, the environmental health, and the health education and promotion. So public health in a 
comparison to a health studies degree is a little bit more scripted. And so there are classes that you have to take um, and they are given in an order that you have to do them in. Health studies, more general, more open. So you have a little bit more flexibility. Um, for a public health, they don't necessarily, are, are not necessarily going towards uh, a pre-health pathway. What they do is they're looking at getting to getting jobs in policy, wanting to change um, things with insurance companies. They become community health specialists, quality improvement coordinators, um, public health administrators, uh, research assistants, prevention specialists. And Boise State also offers a master's in public health. Um, and this is required for a lot of those other jobs. And it's a great program that I know our public health department would want to talk to you about and highly encourage. Next. Okay. So at Boise State, so, and I've mentioned this a couple times already, but um, at Boise State, we have what are called pre-health pathways. And so we don't actually have a pre-med degree or a pre-dental degree, but we have, again, pathways. And so it's exactly what it says. It's we're going to take you on the path to get to your goal. Um, we have 13 different pre-health pathways. They are, some are listed here, but they are chiropractor, dental hygiene, um, dentist, uh, dietetics, medical lab technologist. So these are the guys who are behind the scenes. Um, occupational therapists, optometrists, physicians, physician's assistants, pharmacist, physical therapist, speech language pathologist, and veterinarians. And so with any of this, these degrees, or with, not any, sorry, with any of these pathways, it doesn't matter what you major in. You can major in anything. So if you have a passion for accounting and you want to go become a dentist as well, we can mix those two together. We always ask our students to choose First, when they're looking at their majors, we want them to choose something that they're passionate about. So if you don't like what you study, you're not going to enjoy college. Um, and then we ask them to choose something that's efficient. So there are definitely some pathway or some majors that are more efficient than others. Biology is super efficient if you want to go pre-med. Chemistry, super efficient if you want to go pre-med. Bio, again, biology, if you want to go become a veterinarian. Health studies is really efficient for any of them. But if that's not what you love, if music's your thing, We've had six music majors go to med school. So we have your, we have choices and we will help you get where you wanna go. Next. All right. Well, everybody, thank you so much for sharing more about the amazing programs that you have. Now I want to turn it over to some of our students that are joining us this evening. So we're going to take a moment to let them introduce themselves right before we get to the Q&A portion. I saw that a lot of you were asking some really great questions, but for now, I'd love for Abby and Lauren to get a chance to introduce themselves. Yeah, hi, I can go first. Um, my name is Abby. I'm studying kinesiology here, um, and I'm also part of the Honors College. So I do like to point out that um, you can be a type of um, STEM, College of Health Science major, and be in the Honors College. I'm originally from San Rafael, California, so I am an out-of-state non-resident student that moved to Idaho, if anybody has any more questions about that. Um, and I'm also graduating in May, which is super crazy, but I love Boise State and everything about it. It. So that's a little bit about me and um, let Lauren introduce herself now. Hi everyone, my name is Lauren. I'm double majoring in public health and health studies. Both of those are the general emphasis that Shannon uh, described earlier. And that's how I was kind of able to double major because a lot of those upper division electives that I were was able to choose kind of counted towards both, the do both of those degrees. Um, but in addition to that, I'm also getting a certificate, a 30 credit certificate in public relations within our media department in the College of Arts and Sciences. So I'm all over the place. So it's been really flexible to be able to add all my different interests. Um, about my involvement on campus. So for the Honors College, I participate in Greek life, intramurals. I was an orientation leader, a bunch of different on-campus jobs, um, student philanthropy board, help raise money and writing grants for the school. And last spring semester, I just, I studied abroad um, in Italy for 15 weeks. So bunch of different things. Any of that sounds interesting. Feel free to ask me about them. 
Um, and I'm from Idaho. I'm from the area. My family lives out in Star. Um, I was born downtown and I've been living downtown since I started school. And I'm also graduating in May, which is crazy. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so much, Abby and Lauren. Okay, so just as a reminder, at the very bottom of your screen, you should see that Q&A icon. So be sure to put your questions in there. Um, so now to start, I'll go ahead and go through some questions that have already come through, and then the various speakers that are attending today will be able to chime in. So first, we've got quite a few questions about nursing. So Candice, this first one will be for you. Um, the student is asking, if we applied to nursing as our major on the application and we got into Boise State, do we go into pre-nursing our first year or do we fill out a separate application for nursing too to enter our freshman year? That's a very good question. So yes, <clears throat> excuse me. When you apply to Boise State, you will select nursing on your application that will actually dump you into our pre-nursing population because um, you're not able to select pre-nursing. So when you select nursing, it'll put you into that pre-nursing population. And then you will meet with pre-nursing advisors and make sure you have everything ready to go to apply. And yes, you will do a second application to apply to the School of Nursing. Awesome, thanks so much, Candice. Okay, so this next one is for Shannon. Uh, the student is asking, can you tell us more about pre-dietetics and do you offer this at Boise State? Um, so the pre-dietetics is, we as again, is a pathway. We don't offer it at Boise State. There are two programs in Idaho. Um, one is at the University of Idaho and the other is um, at Idaho State University in Pocatello. Now, um, what we do at Boise State is we help you get the prerequisites that you need to get into one of their master's programs. And the way that works with dietetics is you have a couple options. You can get a bachelor's from Boise State, go on to um, the dietetic school of your choice. You would, if you already have your bachelor, if you got your bachelor's from us, then you would need to do like, uh, I just told you, I totally just forgot the word, a connection program to, um, get those courses done that they want you to have before you go into their program. Um, the other option is to get your prereqs, get the prereqs done at Boise State, transfer to the dietetic school that you want to go to, and then you will finish your bachelor's there. They'll have you finish the um, dietetics program or classes they want you to have, and then you can go into their master's program. Awesome. Thank you so much, Shannon. Okay, so this next question is for Mary. Um, a student is wondering, can you combine something like a business major and pre-dietetics if you wanted to? Yes, absolutely you can. I think Shannon just answered that beautifully. Uh, you can get your prereqs completed at Boise State and work with an advisor, probably Shannon, on what those prereqs are for the dietetics programs that Shannon listed. And then also take you be taking courses that would uh, be designated towards a business degree. And that is an excellent combo. So yeah, absolutely. Cool, thank you. All right, so changing it up, this is a question for Abby. A student wanted to know, at what point do you recommend meeting with the department advisor? It's a really good question. So um, for kinesiology, we have ma mainly one um, advisor that kind of oversees all of them. And her name is Tina. Oh, just kidding. Tina works with the, the yeah, Shannon. Sorry, I was pointing as if you guys could see her where she is on my screen. Um, but within kines, most people normally meet with Tina or one of our peer advisors. Um, and you would start meeting with them that first semester, or even at your orientation is the first time you would meet with them and they would help you sign up for your first semester classes. And then you would meet with them every semester or the peer advisor to make sure you're on the right track for what you want to do post-grad. Um, so for me, for example, my catalog that I'm in or the year I started at Boise State was not necessarily designed to go into PT school, which is what I want to do when I graduate. So I had to meet with Tina to make sure that I was meeting also those prerequisites, which is something they update each year um, based on student recommendations and feedback. But um, so you meet with them about once and once a semester, but you can definitely meet with them as often as you would like as well. 
And if I can just jump into what you just said, Abby. Um, so Tina is amazing and wonderful, but she actually just went on to work with graduate students. And so um, kinesiology has been moved to the pre-health team. And so me and the people on my team, we're the ones that are going to start seeing you for kinesiology. And then we're also part of the pre-health team. So if you're like Abby's doing, if you're interested in physical therapy, occupational therapy, stuff like that, you would meet with us for that as well. Awesome. Thanks, you two. Okay, so Lauren, this is a question for your study abroad experience. The student wanted to know, were you able to study abroad and still graduate on time? And what did that look like for you? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm graduating in the full four years, staying on track. Um, my unique situation, I came out of high school with a lot of concurrent credit. So I was able to have like a 12 credit semester pretty much every semester and still go abroad. Um, even if that's not your case, you could still graduate in four with the proper planning with your study abroad advisors. Um, my biggest suggestion to you is as soon as you know that you're interested in studying abroad, so even your first year, sit down with a specific advisor in addition to um, your academic advisor because they're able to kind of help you um, plan out your four-year plan a little differently just because someone staying on campus all four years might take it in a little different order. So for some of the science classes I needed, I made sure to get them all done before I went, just because when I was in Italy, I did not want to be in a chemistry lab. I wanted to take um, culture and Italian language, cooking, and in addition to my health core classes. So I got to take public health communication, a course, an interdisciplinary course on aging, and like a global policy and health class. So I got the good mix of both. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, so this next question is actually for myself that I can answer as an admissions counselor. A student wanted to know, if I applied to Boise State, will I automatically be considered for the WUI scholarship or do I need to apply for that separately? So that is a really great question. The WUI scholarship is part of uh, one of our four non-resident scholarships that students are automatically considered for when they apply for admissions. So you're considered for this as long as you get your admissions application submitted and your transcript from high school, or if you are transferring to Boise State, sending in those college transcripts instead. So that means if you've graduated high school, you'll send those college transcripts. And so those two things need to be completed by December 15th of this year if you're planning on starting this upcoming fall semester. And so we check to see, does your GPA meet that criteria for the WUI specifically? We're looking for at least a 3.9 cumulative unweighted GPA. Something else to consider with tonight being our College of Health Sciences event that for all four of these automatic scholarships that we offer. Oh, and it looks like actually right in the chat there, we've got the link to these awards. So definitely click on that if you get a chance. But for all four of these automatic scholarships, we do have a couple of ineligible majors. Radiology is ineligible for all four, but then for the Foothills, Ridgeline and Summit, nursing is also an ineligible major. All other majors outside of this are eligible. So for example, psychology, engineering, all of that. So if you do have additional questions about scholarships, definitely put that in the Q&A. So hopefully we can get to it later. Alrighty, so my next question is going to go to Olga tonight. So a student wants to know, if you have an associate's degree in science, can you apply for the sonography program? And if so, how long is the program? I know it's a, it's sometimes a really confusing read. No, that's not quite how that works. Um, if you would like to just go into the certification program, which is the one year program in sonography, you must already be a licensed healthcare provider. You have the with the ability to practice in your field. So um, that would mean perhaps somebody who's done an associate's degree in radiologic sciences and perhaps only wants to do wants to add the certi certification, you know, value added, a work benefit kind of thing. Or maybe somebody who graduated from a nursing program and wants to add sonography. Those are clinical practice healthcare providers. So the way we do it now is we still offer that one year certification for those who have achieved that goal, that level of uh, being licensed and able to practice, or 
students, for example, would apply to a clinical program at the undergraduate level, such as radiology, such as respiratory care, such as nursing, they can add it later, or they, I'm giving you all of this, right? They can be apply for the Bachelor of Science, Radiologic Sciences with the sonography as their primary um, licensure, licensure modality. So lots of different ways. I tell my students, there's always different ways to get to the goal that you're, you're wanting to achieve. And that is why I'm encouraging students to look at more than one option, more than one program, because a respiratory therapist can go into sonography, a nurse can go into sonography, as well as a radiologic technologist can go into sonography, for example. Great. Thank you, Olga. Okay, so this next question is going to be for Candice. So after being accepted to Boise State, do you apply to the nursing program before or after taking the prerequisites? You will want to take your prerequisites first. Um, I recommend meeting with one of your academic advisors frequently um, to make sure you're on track and complete those prerequisites, then um, complete that application. Great, thank you. All right, Shannon, this one's for you. What kind of jobs can I go into with a major in kinesiology or what kind of grad colleges um, can I go into as well or grad school programs? So uh, that's the cool thing about kinesiology, kinesiology is it, it covers so many things. Um, so as far as careers, there's athletic training, um, there's health coaching, there's sports coaching. Um, you can become a teacher. You can do... Um, yeah, a variety of things. Um, sorry, I can't even think of them off the top of my head. But as far as um, like graduate programs, PT is huge. So physical therapy, just like Abby was saying that she's going into physical therapy, um, occupational therapy. Um, there is pre-med. Pre, I have a student that's pre-dental and is a kinesiology major. Um, I've got a student that's pre-vet is a kinesiology major. Um, really, it's really it's anything PA works really well with the kinesiology major and so think of any it's really you can go into any kind of career where you're working with movement and you know so the coaching stuff the um they, a lot of our kinesi students become um health coaches they become personal trainers um they do all that kind of stuff they're all most of the ones i talk to anyway are big into like working out and that working out scene and want to benefit other people with their knowledge of that kind of stuff great thank you shannon all right, Mary, how does it work if I want to change my major? And do you have any tips? Yeah, so if you change your major, one, join the club. That's everyone else. Uh, <laughs> and um, happens quite often. You would definitely want to reach out to our office, to the advising office. We are well-versed in major changes um, and can talk to you about the different uh, options that you have out there ways to make it more effective you know think about your goals uh shannon mentioned what are you passionate about what and also where are your academic strengths where do you um excel um what classes maybe do you struggle the most with because that might also influence your decision uh and as well what kinds of careers are you interested in we also have a close collaboration with the career services office and we also have an embedded uh, career specialist who specializes in health science careers. So we do a lot of work together um, in terms of what you can do with a degree, which is really vast, as well as if you want to switch or pivot and how much do you want to pivot um, in determining those choices. So I would say, consider what your goals are, your passion, do your homework on the um, different career options and definitely make an appointment with us. Perfect, thank you. All right, Abby, I'm going to put you on the spot here. What would you like to do with your degree after you graduate? Oh, I am actually probably a pretty lucky person when you ask me that question and I have I have an answer. Um, so I'm totally taking a gap year. Um, I plan on volunteering abroad and just working Um I've been really fortunate as well that for about the past year and a half, I was able to work at a physical therapy office, just less than a five minute drive from Boise State. Um, 
And so I know kind of what I want to go into there. And um, I'm taking some time off at that clinic, but I'll be working there during my gap year as well. And then unfortunately, Boise State does not have a physical therapy um, program for after you get your bachelor's of kinesiology. So I'm going to be looking at a couple surrounding states to go to their graduate schools and try to stay as close to the area as possible. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, Lauren, how is the honors college different from the standard college? And what are some application tips that you might have? Yeah, absolutely. So me and Abby are both in the honors college. And I would say kind of the biggest selling point of it is that it's that small school environment within that larger community. So I came from a graduating high school class of 50 students. I love sharing that. Everyone's jaws drop, but I was a little intimidated to go to a bigger school. So I was really adamant about being in the honors college. It's about 15 students to one professor. So about half of the average class size you'd see um, at the university. It's 21 credits embedded into your overall degree. Every single major can be a part of the honors college if you would like. So it's not that additional coursework, just for example, instead of taking English 101, you would take the honors section of English 101. Some really cool upper division elective credits you can get that aren't open to the rest of the population. So I took a medical improv class one year that was taught by a professor at ICOM, which is our DO medical school in the Valley. So she only came to campus and taught that one course. So really unique opportunity wouldn't have gotten if it wasn't for that. Um, application tips. So it's a 500 word personal statement and they change that prompt every year. And then also a resume and the Honors College website, they give you a template that you can follow. So students are being, I guess, considered based off of the criteria on the resume, not your resume building skills. So don't worry about that part. That's not something you're super confident in. So they're just mainly looking for students who want to be involved. Um, since it is a relatively small program, they just want to support students that want to take advantage of the opportunities. So if you did student council, a sport leader, or lead at your work, literally anything that you could think of, put it on there that can make you a better candidate. Um, and yeah, I would probably finish off by saying that being in the honors hasn't made my experience any harder. If anything, it's just enhanced the quality of those classes. Yeah, hope that answered it. Great. Thank you so much, Lauren. Okay, so this next one is a follow up on the scholarships that I was discussing earlier. So a student wanted to know, when we apply for admissions while living in state, do we automatically get considered for scholarships? So I'm guessing the student who would ask this is an Idaho resident. We also have automatic scholarships for our Idaho residents too. So very similarly to the non-residents where you have to apply for admissions, make sure that you get that in-progress transcript in, whether that's from high school or if you've graduated, sending in that college transcript. And your deadline as an Idaho resident for fall 2023 is going to be February 15th, 2023. So that link that was shared earlier in the chat with um, taking you to our scholarships, our Idaho resident scholarships are there as well. So we do offer the True Blue Promise Scholarship, the Deans and the Presidential, each of them varying with the required cumulative unweighted GPA that we're looking at. But great question. Okay, so now I'm going to bring it back over to Olga. We've got another radiology question that came in. How many radiology students are accepted each year? So for the largest program is the diagnostic radiology, which is the x-ray modality, and that is 32 students. For sonography, that will be eight students. For the MRI, that would be 15 students. Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay, Candice, we got another nursing question that's come through. What is the percentage of Boise State students who meet the minimum requirements with prerequisites that are accepted into the nursing major? Oh, great question. So um, I would say, um, so we just actually finished um, an application cycle and we actually had um, over 230 applicants and um, we can only admit 80 every cohort. So we admit two cohorts a year. So we admit 160 students a year, but in each of those application cycles, 
it's been um, around 200 students. Awesome. Thanks, Candice. Okay, Shannon, with all of the programs that you had shared earlier, the student wanted to know, would you recommend any of these programs for someone interested in general dentistry? Yes. Um, so the health studies with the science emphasis is where we can have quite a few students that um, choose this one and then opt to go to dental school. So with the science emphasis, um, it is a little bit more, again, broad. There is the chemistry 111 and 112, which is our Gen Chem 1 and 2. Are, that are required for dental schools are part of the major, as is the bio 191 and 192, so general biology one and general biology two. Um, the health studies with the science of this has four more spots for those upper division classes. And so for dental school, you need OCHEM one, most likely you need OCHEM two, you need biochemistry. Um, oftentimes you need like a zoology class, like head and neck anatomy. Um, you may need genetics. Um, and you need physics. And so those all fit within the health studies with the science emphasis. Um, and then we'll help you, like again, we've got a lot of students that um, are actually headed to dental school. And so with our major, we'll help you make sure you get those classes done and we'll look at your schools with you and help you figure out which um, prerequisites you need and we make sure you get those done by the time you're graduated. Great, thank you. Okay, Mary, the student wanted to know um, if we had any sort of major or pre-pathway related to sports medicine. Uh, yeah, so I asked Shannon this and she recommended the human performance and exercise science degree. So I would trust her and go with that. Great, thank you. Okay, Abby, were you certain on your major when you came to Boise State? And if so, how did you land on that? Yeah. Um, going off that sports med also, um, they definitely recommend the exercise science or um, the pre-athletic training um, path, uh, kinese emphasis for sports medicine. Um, for my major, similar it's a pretty common trend I've seen throughout my time as a student employee as well um, a lot of times people within the kinesiology department uh, had some type of injury growing up or have always been involved in sports and that was the case for me as well um, I had my first knee surgery when I was in eighth grade and I went to physical therapy and my physical therapist was also the physical therapist for the U.S. Um, ski and snowboard team. And I thought it was just the coolest job ever. Um, and as I've gotten to spend more time in the field, I've definitely grown my love for it. Um, and that's something that Boise State has really focused on is that hands-on learning aspect to make sure you are um, interested in the major and beyond just learning in the classroom. Um, to graduate with a kinesiology degree, you have to do a 135 hour internship. Um, it's at the location of your choice. So I chose a physical therapy office, but I also could have split locations, which would have helped me decide if I was more interested in OT or PT. Um, so there's a couple different options, even if you're like, I like kinesiology and what it has to offer, they do offer a lot of hands-on learning opportunities to help you narrow it down as well. Yeah. Thanks, Abby. Okay, so Lauren, you did a wonderful job explaining the Honors College and all that it takes when you apply. The student wanted to know if they don't have leadership experience, will that alter their chances of getting in? No, I don't think it will. They want to just see your in-school involvement. So even if you're a part of a club, but maybe you're not the front-facing person of it, that's completely okay. Um, a lot of what they're looking for to is just, I guess, if you want to have more of that structured study time, those smaller class sizes, if that's kind of what you're interested in, they're not looking for this super extroverted person who does all these things necessarily. Um, there's plenty of people from a bunch of different backgrounds, from all different degree areas that are just having a willingness to be kind of in that certain academic setting. So if you don't think I'm not a 4.0 student and I'm not the ASB president, that's completely fine. Um, they'll also give you more prompts. If you did volunteer experience, that's something that's good. Um, and then I also think it's optional. You can submit um, some letters of recommendation too. That can help just kind of share who you are as a person. That's really what they're looking for. Thank you. 
<laughs> All right, so after talking about some of the Idaho scholarships earlier, we had a student ask, is the presidential scholarship only for students in the Honors College? That's a great question. So the presidential scholarship is one of our Idaho automatic awards that students are considered for as long as they're applying by February 15th. So this is a $3,000 a year award per year for four years and you simply have to have at least a 3.9 cumulative unweighted, regardless if you are deciding to apply to the Honors College or not. Um, naturally though, some students who are within that GPA range do consider the Honors College. However, if you simply apply, you have at least at that 3.9, you'll automatically be considered for that scholarship. So great question. Okay, so now back up to Candace. What program or at least an overview of classes would you suggest going into um, if you wanted to become a NICU nurse? That is a great question. So um, actually our nursing program here at Boise State um, is a more, it's more generalized and it prepares our nursing students to move on to whatever um, specialty they were to go into. Um, of course, when you graduate from the program and you get a job in a hospital, you will probably likely go into a residency and learn more about that um, area that you're going into. Great, thank you. So Shannon, this student wanted to know what the pre-vet program is like at Boise State. Um, so with our pre-vet students, a lot of them actually choose to do a, a again, you can major in whatever you want. Um, but for efficiency purposes, a lot of them go for the um, biology major. And so with that, you'd have two um, advisors. You'd have your biology advisor or your academic advisor, and then you'll have your pre-health advisor. So you'll see them. You'll see someone on my team. Um, the veterinary requires such a lot of the same things that you need for pre-med pre-dental so the general biology one and two um general chem one and two ochem one depends on the school for ochem two biochem and then what a lot of the vet schools want and this is why the biology degree is so efficient is be that they want you to have some zoology classes you know animal nutrition um, animal physiology stuff like that and so those courses if you do the cellular if you did there the right emphasis i think it's the yeah it's the not the, not the cellular molecular one, it's the other one. <laughs> um, so if you chose this, those classes are included in there. And so you're not spending extra time and extra money trying to get those classes done. Great, thank you. Okay, Mary, the student wanted to know, and I might butcher the words here, so please forgive me. Um, they wanted to know if there are any programs for epidemiology or toxicology or would that be more of a general pre-med molecular biology program? Um, well, we actually have a, we had one of our awesome peer advisors who just got accepted into an epidemiology program in Georgia, I think it was, and he is a public health major. So um, goes very well, you know, with the communal aspect. And then his minors in chemistry that also so is associated with toxicology. Great combo there. Uh, as well, health studies um, with a science emphasis, as Shannon has mentioned a few times, offers great flexibility with the curriculum and the courses that you would need. So I would say public health, health studies, um, and you can add any minors um, that would enhance uh, the prereqs that you would need into those programs, as well as we have the College of Innovation and Design that does uh, vertical integrated projects where you can incorporate research. So um, lots of different ways in which you can get really creative uh, in, in working towards those goals of epidemiology and toxicology. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't even think about how the College of Health or um, Innovation and Design can really combine with the health sciences. So thank you for sharing that. Okay, Abby, this next one's for you and is probably relevant to a lot of the out-of-state students that are joining us today. A student wanted to know, what is it like moving out of state and was it hard to adjust? 
Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, probably one of the most common questions we get asked over in admissions. Um, luckily, Boise State is about 48% out of state, 52% in state. Those numbers might have shifted since I was told last, um, but and it's about 50, 50% on average, which makes it really easy to meet a lot of people from your area or from other states who are kind of going through the same transition as you, um, as well as everybody that I met that was from the state of Idaho. Um, Lauren, for example, I met my freshman year um, was always just super welcoming and we've been great friends since um, I would say the hardest adjustment was probably like having all four seasons for the first time in my life um, but that also was a very exciting adjustment um, considering also I know probably the scariest season for some of these uh, California people like me would be winter um, but I promise winter is not too bad here you can we like to say you can wear your vans all year round on campus um, and we do get the uh, snow in the foothills though which is fun um, it definitely was not too hard of an adjustment um, being only about an hour flight away if I did want to go home for a random weekend it was it was definitely doable um and everybody here has always just been so kind and welcoming that it made the transition a lot easier yeah thank you okay Lauren you knew this question was coming at you tonight a student wanted to know what are you hoping to pursue with your degree when you graduate oh great I knew um so I am doing a bunch of different things so with public health Health studies and public relations. I'm actually going into an internship next semester with um, a PR firm. And I'm hoping that with that, I can kind of mix all those different fields. So I really like writing, communicating, campaigning, but there's a lot of, I feel like the communication side of healthcare is a little bit further behind than the clinical practice that you may first think of. So I really hope that I can do a lot more of publishing on those uh, materials um, and different things like that within firms or different like health and wellness companies. So it's been a nice use to be able to have a background that I've known for so long because I did a lot of like, um, I went to a medical charter school here. So I did like CNA, D, now having all this background, but being able to communicate that to the public. So hopefully something in that field. Thank you so much. Okay, so our final question of the night, this goes out to Abby and Lauren. What advice would you give an incoming student at Boise State? Um, my biggest piece of advice to anybody incoming college is to just say yes to everything, um, be involved on campus, but make sure you're still passing your classes. I would say, to give yourself grace and know that it's on a point A to point B linear process. I was undeclared until halfway through my sophomore year. And I was just in such a panic of, I have to know exactly what I'm doing. Um, but I've stacked things on throughout the years as I've gone. So I wasn't always doing all three of these things, just my interest kind of piled up and that's completely okay. I've never met another student doing the exact same three things that I am, but it's kind of the exciting part of it. Um, just know that you're more than your major. An employer is going to hire outside of that major too. So major is not the end all be all. That's my advice. I love that. Okay. So with that, we are very close to ending our session. All of you had asked such wonderful questions and I wish that we could get to every one of them, but unfortunately we cannot. However, up here on my screen, you should be able to see a QR code and some various links. So on the very left there, that QR code will take you to our academic appointment request form. So if you're hoping to meet with, let's say, a representative from a, the College of Health Sciences like tonight, you can connect with them one-on-one, -on -one, virtually, or if you're visiting us in person. Um, and then, of course, if you wanted to learn more about other programs, I know somebody asked about psychology tonight, then you can request to meet with somebody from that area too. And additionally, you'll see that we have other virtual and in-person visit options available. So in the middle there, our future student session, that covers several topics, including the city of Boise, academics, involvement, admissions criteria, scholarship opportunities, like some of you are asking today. Um, and then we also host in-person tours 
Monday through Friday, as well as some select Saturdays, because we know that's pretty convenient for some families. Those are called blue and orange Saturdays. And along with our Discover Boise State events on Saturdays, we would love to host you on campus. We'll roll out the blue carpet and show you all that there is to be involved here. And so lastly, every one of you has a designated admissions counselor from Boise State, such as myself to help answer any of your admissions questions. So that QR code will take you directly to figuring out who is your admissions counselor based on whatever high school that you attend or what territory you live, what state you live in. But we want to thank you all so much for joining tonight. And I want to thank all of the panelists today too, our student speakers and representatives from the College of Health Sciences. So we look forward to continuing to connect with you through your journey of becoming a Boise State Bronco. And with that, we hope that you have a wonderful evening and as always, go Broncos. Mm -hmm.